If you're struggling to get thicker, healthier hair, this might be the problem. You might be neglecting this one thing, which is actually the whole reason why anyone has thick, healthy hair or both. This is scalp care. If you want thicker, healthier, and longer hair, it starts at the scalp. If you have a damaged scalp, a clogged scalp, an oily scalp, it's gonna lead to you not having the hair that you want. So let's get into all the ways you can take care of the scalp so that you can get thicker, healthier hair. The first thing you can do to ensure that your hair is the healthiest, and I personally think this is one of the most important ones, it is using shampoo, but not just using shampoo. It is shampooing your hair twice okay think of it like doing a double cleanse on your face you start with an oil cleanser and then you go over with your foaming cleanser now luckily for hair you don't have to do an oil cleanse although they are available all you need to do is use your same exact shampoo twice the first round kind of removes all the buildup the grease the oil and that's why even if you put a lot of it your hair doesn't seem to lather as much so once you rinse that out you want to go in with a second wash and thankfully this time you can use even less product but it will still really clean your scalp and that's when your hair is going to get super foamy and clean and now notice that every time i'm saying use shampoo i'm saying put it on your scalp a lot of us even i used to do this actually not that long ago do not focus the shampoo on your hair shaft because you think your hair is so oily, it's got a lot of products, so you want to put the shampoo on your hair. Not only will you not be putting enough shampoo on your scalp, but you will be drying out your actual hair shaft because your hair doesn't need direct shampoo on it. You want to put the shampoo directly on your scalp, lather it, and then use that lather to wash the rest of your hair. Trust me, it is so much easier to get product out of your hair than your scalp so that water rinsing down the shampoo rinsing down and you moving the foam downwards on your hair will actually be enough to clean your hair and not only will you have a clean fresh unclogged scalp but you will also have hydrated hair that is not been dried that has not been dried out by your shampoo the second tip also has to do with shampoo and this is to use a clarifying shampoo at least once a month it makes a major difference now clarifying shampoos have very different names but they all technically do basically the same thing so it might say detox shampoo it might say clarifying shampoo they are all basically the same thing basically all you want this shampoo to do is to thoroughly clean your hair get off any product buildup any excess oils and it also helps with hard water which most of us deal with so this just gets rid of it just detoxes your hair removes all the heavy metals any minerals any product buildup and this not only thoroughly cleans your hair it allows your hair to absorb all the moisturizing products i hope you can hear that cricket in the background or is it a bird it's a bird okay hopefully the bird is not annoying you anyway the clarifying shampoo is extremely essential because it will help your hair absorb the moisture better you won't have anything that's clogging your hair strands which can actually make your hair feel very dry and brittle because it feels like no matter how much you wash your hair it just feels dry no matter how much moisturizer you put on it it might be your shampoo so I would suggest once a month for most people however if you use a lot of oils in your hair if you use a lot of products like butters thick creams gels to define your hair if you use anything like that I would suggest twice a month or maybe even every single week when you wash your hair however if you're going to use it every week you don't have to do two washes with the detox shampoo because even if it's a great shampoo it could be a little bit drying i would suggest you do the first wash with the detox shampoo and then the second wash with your regular shampoo which should be more moisturizing my favorite detox shampoo is the redken cleansing cream but i know that olaplex has one now i believe it's called the 4c shampoo and l'oreal's professional line also has i believe it's called the metal detox those are all really popular and known to work really well. The third thing you can do to achieve thicker, healthier hair is quite expensive, but extremely effective. And I'm not gonna lie, I was very skeptical in the beginning because it just seems like one of those things that kinda doesn't do anything until I started using it. And this is LED therapy. So the one I've been using recently is by Current Body. It's that LED helmet and it has LED lights in it that target your scalp and it's basically a bunch of led lights that spread to a wide surface area of your scalp from the front 
all the way to the back since it's like a helmet and led light therapy has been heavily researched by the fda and they continue to be more and more new products i believe hopefully it's still running this is not sponsored but i do have a discount code if it's still active if it's not i guess you can just check on the site and i will link it in the description box below not only does led light therapy help with boosting your actual hair growth by the light going into your follicles and basically giving your follicles energy to grow healthier and faster the amazing thing about led light therapy is that it doesn't only boost your hair growth and help regrow any bald spots or if you're experiencing any thinning laser therapy can really help with that what I also like it for is preventative measures. Think about it like using a retinol for your skin, even if you don't have any wrinkles or fine lines. I use retinol, I use tretinoin. And so you think of it as a preventative measure, whether you suffer from traction alopecia, just other thinning in other areas of your hair, or even just stunted hair growth. I have noticed that it makes my hair grow so much faster and the easiest way for me to tell is when my hair is in cornrows. I mentioned this before on the channel but I usually keep my hair in cornrows for about 5 weeks max, 6 weeks if I'm really pushing it and my hair just looks like it's all blended together like a hat by the time it's time to take the braids down and wash my hair. However, since I started using that LED helmet. Basically, my hair looks like the way it looks after five weeks in three weeks. So I can easily tell that my hair is definitely growing faster. And this is not advertised on the packaging, but for me personally, it helps my forehead. The skin just looks so much better because the helmet reaches there. But also, I barely, actually, I wouldn't even say barely. I don't get any dandruff and the reason why this is shocking to me is because I oil my scalp very often however when you use this helmet you are not supposed to oil your scalp because apparently it can block the light from penetrating your scalp and it could have any other side effects they just recommend not to do it so because of this I only use oil once a week now which is the night before I've washed my hair after I've already used the LED light therapy hat and I find that the entire week I have no dandruff whereas before by day three or four if I forgot to put oil or I just decided not to put oil I would get dandruff not in the form of a fungal infection but more of just dry scalp because I naturally have dry hair dry scalp dry skin the next thing I think is one of the most overlooked tips that can help you get thicker healthier and longer hair and the reason why I think it is neglected is because people override every other tip and go straight to genetics. Now, genetics do have a role in how every person's hair grows in the color, in the thickness, in the length, all that is influenced by genetics. However, your diet is something that you can control. You can't control your genetics. So if you want to complain about having bad genetics or that other people have better genetics than you, that will do absolutely nothing for you. The fact is everybody is born with the genetics they have, but with your diet, you can actually, this has been scientifically proved, you can change the way your genes are expressed by the food that you eat. This includes all your minerals, vitamins, protein, fats, and carbs. Hair is mostly protein in the form of keratin, so you need to eat a lot more protein if you're not eating enough. You, eat, you need to eat a healthy amount of carbs and fats because these are all essential to stimulating your scalp, sending blood flow to your scalp, making sure that your follicles are nourished directly from the scalp, not something you can put on your hair. Eating healthier will actually make a drastic difference with your hair growth. I notice this a lot because one of my biggest struggles with food is that I don't have a big appetite and I'm also on a fitness journey so sometimes if my calories are a little bit low my hair is not a priority just like everybody's hair is not a priority your hair is not a vital organ which is why you really need to be eating enough of all the essential nutrients you need for your hair to be hydrated and for it to be healthy if you are eating less than what your body needs Everything is going to go to all your vital organs first and then if there's any leftovers then it will go to your hair and that is why when you are extremely stressed or when you are just ill the first thing to go or look extremely terrible is your hair. It might start falling out, it might become brittle and dry. Some people even go completely gray because your body is in crisis mode and so it's gonna drop off everything that's not important. You are basically like a tree in the fall. The moment fall comes, they're like, actually, we don't need leaves to survive, so we're gonna drop all the leaves off so that we can focus on the trunk of the tree. 
that's your hair it's the leaves and just in case you're wondering vitamins and supplements are included in your diet so depending on what you're deficient in or what you think you might need or what your doctor may prescribe to you this all falls under diet as well and then the next thing that can make a very drastic difference in the thickness and the health of your hair is hair oiling now hair oiling has been going viral again i feel like every few years it has its moments because people forget about it and then they try it and then they get amazed by the results and they want to start using it again and make everybody use it again and so it's having its moment again now and i'm extremely happy about it because if this is not the first time you're seeing me you know that i absolutely love hair oiling now the good thing about hair oils is they are so many and all you need to do is find the one that works best for you what i would recommend is to find one or two carrier oils that your hair really likes and then essential oils carrier oils can always be used by themselves but essential oils should never be used by themselves because they can have adverse side effects and they may not be immediate so you might be saying actually i use pure rosemary oil on my scalp the essential oil i have been using it for two months my hair is growing like crazy i have seen no side effects so it must be going great and then six months from now when your hair is falling out or you have other health issues you might not even associate it to using the pure essential oil on your scalp just please avoid whatever could possibly happen and always dilute them the oils i specifically suggest for the carrier oils are camellia oil which is my new favorite oil avocado oil and castor oil these are the ones i personally like but there are so many other options out there that you might like better than the ones that i've mentioned and for the essential oils my holy grails that are always in my routine are rosemary oil peppermint oil and tea tree oil because they all have very similar ish benefits but they all do different things at the same time although i must say i do use even more essential oils like eucalyptus lavender however if i had to recommend my top three those would be the ones and if you'd like to see my ultimate oil mix that's like 10 times better than rosemary oil watch this video right here that i have already posted and you'll learn how to make this oil thank you so much for watching hit the subscribe button right there if you didn't in the beginning thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in my next one bye